Well, it seems like we've got even more bad news for Lauren Boebert, a.k.a. Bobo. But just to catch you all up to speed, if you haven't been following this story as closely as I have, she switched districts in an effort to save her failing political career because in Colorado's third congressional district, it's more purple. And polls showed that she'd probably lose to her Democratic opponent, Adam Frisch. So after Republican Ken Buck in the neighboring fourth district announced that he'd be retiring, she then chose to abandon her constituents in the third district and run in the fourth, since that one is more solidly Republican, and thus, she would never have to worry about losing to a Democrat ever again. The only problem with this strategy is she gave up her incumbency advantage and now has to compete in an open Republican Party primary, and that hasn't been going very well for her, to say the least. After the first debate, she was ruthlessly attacked by her GOP opponents and came in fifth place in a straw poll, and at the second debate, she was ignored entirely by her opponents, which is a pretty bad sign because it signals that they no longer view her as a threat or perhaps their internal polling shows that they're beating her and thus don't have to worry about her. But that hasn't stopped attacks from Republican Party voters in the 4th District, particularly evangelicals, who don't want to support her because they think that she's a lowlife after she was caught vaping and jerking off her boyfriend in a theater while they watched Beetlejuice. And she's well aware of the fact that her little Beetlejuice incident hurt her, which is why she's now trying to do historical historical revisionism about her sexual degeneracy, all in an effort to win back the evangelicals that she lost. For example, in an unnecessarily long and gratuitous puff piece written about her in the Washington Post, she was quoted saying, people were freaking out about me dancing in the seat at Beetlejuice. Well, they should see me in church. But Lauren, people weren't freaking out because you were dancing. They were freaking out because you jerked off your date in public. And now it seems like you're kind of saying that you jerk people off in church as well, which I'm sure will assuage the fears of evangelicals that you initially courted but lost because they now view you as a hypocrite. Rightfully so, might I add. So, I mean, suffice to say, things haven't gone too well for Bobo lately. That is, until the Calvary arrived in the form of an endorsement by none other than Donald J. Trump, which she gleefully shared on Twitter. So, the question is, did the Trump endorsement help? And the answer, seemingly, at least based on the small amount of anecdotal evidence that we have, is uh, no, it did not help. (laughs) I'll repeat, Trump's endorsement seemingly did not help her at all. Newsweek explains, another straw poll was conducted on March 3rd, only a day after Boebert was endorsed in her race by Trump at a debate in Holyoke, Colorado. Once again, she struggled against the competition, placing third behind former state senator and Logan County Commissioner Jerry Sonnenberg and veteran state lawmaker Ted Harvey. The poll sample size was around 180 debate attendees, which could be considered too low to be representative of broader trends. And that's a really important point. To be fair, this isn't a scientific poll. And also, she only was endorsed one day before this debate. So there could be a lot of people there that didn't know she was endorsed by Trump. So maybe we don't necessarily know the true effect that Trump's endorsement had. Although I doubt that they didn't know because I'm assuming she told everyone that she was endorsed by Donald Trump. But this is a relatively small sample size and the people there might not necessarily be representative of the entire district. So it's important to keep that in mind. But the people, you know, showing up to these debates, at least they don't seem moved at all by Trump's endorsement, which isn't too surprising considering the fact that this is Ken Buck's old district, who is viewed as a more traditional Republican as opposed to a MAGA extremist freak like Bobo. So it is possible that there might not be an appetite for that type of Republican politics in this district. Having said that, though, is it a foregone conclusion that she's going to lose, at least based on the anecdotal evidence that we've seen thus far and the straw polls that we have? Unfortunately, no. Because uh, we actually do have at least one scientific poll. Now, usually you need multiple polls. And, you know, the average of that kind of gives us an indication as to where voters are going. But we have one from Kaplan Strategies that was conducted on February 25th. And at least according to this poll, I am sad to report 
that Lauren Bobo is absolutely obliterating her Republican opponents. Newsweek continues, the polling aggregator site 538 features only one poll for the 4th District GOP race, with Boebert scoring a 25-point lead over her nearest competitor, State Representative Mike Lynch. The polling company behind the results, Kaplan Strategies, suggested that Boebert's advantage could fade as voters coalesce around one rival candidate further along in the race. The Colorado congressional primary will take place on June 20. Fifth. Yeah, so I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. But if she ends up winning the primary, the race is effectively over at that point because this is a deep red district, which means she's all but guaranteed to go back to Congress and remain in that seat for the foreseeable future. Because going forward, if she wins this primary, there's not going to be any open GOP primaries in the future. So she wins that seat and doesn't have to worry about Democratic challengers in general elections. Mission accomplished. Now, we can't draw too many conclusions about that one poll because a lot can change between now and Colorado's June 25th primary. And as Kaplan's strategy suggested to Newsweek, yeah, there's still a lot of people in the race. And if they all kind of drop out and coalesce around one person, that could be enough to potentially defeat her. But The question is, why is there such a disparity between what's happening on the ground with these straw polls and the scientific poll, which kind of takes a broader look at the entire district? And it's hard to say for sure, but it could be that people showing up for her opponents are just more engaged politically. But that's not always indicative of a broader voting base, right? So her voters might not necessarily be as politically active in that they show up to these debates to support her, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to be reliable votes for her when it comes to the primary. But I mean, the people that she's running against have really deep ties to the community, and she doesn't. She's called a carpetbagger and attacked by constituents for not being in that district. So it's certainly possible that her opponents overperform the polls if they mobilize enough voters, but we'll just have to wait and see. It's impossible to predict what's going to happen at this point. All I know is the thought of not having to hear about Bobo ever again, it just, think about it for a moment. It's a wonderful thought, isn't it? Now, on top of that, her losing after switching districts so she has an easier time would be the most hilarious outcome ever produced by our electoral system. And like if that happened, I would lose my shit. I'd be so happy. So I am crossing my fingers and my toes, but I'm not going to get my hopes up because we don't know what's going to happen. Either way, I will keep you all posted on this race. Vagina. 